to our other top story tonight, convenience, but at what cost? So for years, there have been campaigns to get wine on the shelves of Colorado grocery stores. And next month, you finally have a chance to vote on it. It's Proposition 125. Tonight, Denver 7 political reporter Megan Lopez is taking an in-depth 360 look at why a measure that seems to have plenty of support has many small liquor shops pushing back. Proposition 125 asks voters whether they want to allow grocery stores and convenience stores to sell wine starting next March. It means that along with picking up lunch meats and toilet paper, you can also snag a bottle of wine without having to make another stop. A limited number of stores already allow this. This measure would expand it, automatically converting beer retail licenses to also include wine. In this Denver 7 Election 360, you'll hear from a group that supports the measure, another that opposes it, and a small business that says this could force them to close. First, let's look back for some context. For years, grocery stores were only allowed to sell liquor in one location in the state. Everything else could only sell low strength or 3.2 beer. In 2016, however, that changed with a Colorado Senate bill dubbed the Great Compromise. Part of that compromise was that the grocers got a limited amount of licenses, full strength licenses, beer, wine, and spirits over a certain amount of time. First, grocery stores could have five liquor licenses statewide, then eight, then 13 and 20, and finally unlimited licenses by 2037. Now with the latest proposition, another potentially big change. Full strength beer has been a wild success in grocery stores. Consumers love it. Grocery stores love it. And supporters of Proposition 125 want to replicate that success with wine too. 125 will allow consumers a great deal of convenience. They'll allow consumers to pick up a bottle of wine when they go to the grocery store to pick up dinner. Michelle Ling represents groups behind the ballot measure. She says 37 states are already doing this and wine was always supposed to be part of that great compromise. At the 11th hour, it was taken out. And um, so this has always been the intent. She also doesn't buy the concerns that this will hurt liquor store business. It was the same argument made in 2016 over selling beer. And that has just not been the case. So in fact, we have 10 more liquor stores today. In the end, she says this measure is about one thing, convenience. We're standing in Joy Wine and Spirits on 6th and Marion in Denver, Colorado. My dad owned this store since 1963. At small liquor stores across the state. We're gonna maybe show you something that you might not know about. Buying a bottle of wine is as much about the experience as the taste. What we're gonna offer you is a, a very personal experience. You're gonna come out feeling confident in your purchase. Owner Carolyn Joy worries that offering wine in grocery stores will result in less variety. And there's one buyer, so that one buyer is going to be buying for multiple stores and you're going to see the same things. When beer was allowed in grocery stores, Joyce says sales dropped dramatically, but they were able to adapt by selling more craft options. For wine, though, it's a different story, so she's worried. For my business, this would be very devastating. There's about 1,600 independent mom and pop liquor stores throughout the state. And about half are owned by women and about two thirds are owned by folks who have English as a second language. Chris Fine from the Colorado Licensed Beverage Association worries as many as 800 of those small liquor stores could go out of business if this becomes law. He says the great compromise was just that, a compromise meant to last 20 years. So if grocery stores are willing to go back on that deal and try to work wine in now. It's just a matter of time before they're gonna want spirits. The, this is, again, just about greed. It's not really about consumer convenience. Big money is being spent on this ballot measure. Instacart, Whole Foods, Target, Safeway, and Kroger have all kicked in millions on this campaign. For retailers, it comes down to convenience, but liquor stores say that comes with a cost. In November, it will be up to voters to decide which of those principles matters more. Megan Lopez, Denver 7. And Colorado did try adding wine to grocery stores. However, voters rejected that back in 1984. So I did some digging and found that our state actually has a wine industry development board, which tracks Colorado's wine industry. Our state started with just five wineries in 1990. Now we're home to more than 170 of them. 
A large majority of Colorado's vineyards are located in the western slope in Mesa County. More than 85 percent of state vineyards surround areas near Grand Junction and Palisade. And if you're wondering, Riesling is the most common variety of grape harvested in Colorado. In total, the wine industry brings in roughly $300 million to Colorado's economy every year.